Hello, this is more of a, uh, a show on what can be done to a bike. Uh, I'm going from carburetors, changing it over to EFI. Uh, I'm using the Megasquirt system, Megasquirt 2 with a V3 board on it. Um, once that's really been set up, we've got the tail off. Uh, that's been running for quite a while, um, running Spark only. Uh, there's no issue with that at all, it works really good. I'm surprised more people don't use it to be honest. Um, but now I'm taking the plunge. I've been doing a bit of development work. A guy named Dave, who's been uh, making um, uh, the uh, Mega Tunix program, uh, which runs on Linux. Uh, I'd really suggest people who are looking into running a bit of custom software definitely check it out. It's probably one of the best solutions out there. Um, I'd also suggest that a, um, anyone else to do anything more on their bike definitely look into the Mega Squirt project. Uh, you can run micro squirts, people are running them on drag cars. It's a dude with um, a Gladiator um, tractor puller, and he's running, I think it was 27 litre diesel with 24 spark plugs and injectors on it, and that's still running mega squirts. So you can run it on a single cylinder two stroke all the way up to pretty much anything you can imagine. Um, but yeah, this is basically just a documentation of what you can do. Um, we've already got the other stuff, and I'll, halfway through the build, I'll show you. Okay, as you can see, most of the, uh, well, the whole head's pretty much off now. Uh, we've just got that sitting down there. Now, it's taken me a bit over an hour and a half, almost two hours, to get to this stage. Um, what I'll show you. Okay, what we got here, this is the old cylinder head. Um, you can see it's pretty, pretty gunky and carbonised. There's the inlets, all the other hoo-ha that goes with it, cams, buckets, all the good stuff. This is the new one. This is completely stock. I've not modified this one in any way other than giving it a nice big water blast. Um, what we're doing is these here, I've actually just lightly taken out this here just for where the injectors are going to sit. And this is the throttle body unit that I'm going to do. Um, this is a TDM 900. Um, they've been taken out 41.2 mils, so they're a, a 38 mil stock, so that's about 120 something thou uh, for all you Yanks out there. Um, yeah, they flow a fair bit more now, which is pretty good. I've got the, uh, the flow bench and whatnot there to take care of that. Um, later on, I will uh, do another head, and I will be flowing it a lot harder. This is purely for getting the EFI on, just to test it, see how everything goes. Um, now begins the arduous task of actually changing everything over, lapping the valves in and all the other brilliant stuff that goes with it. Um, this is going to be rebuilding all the head. Um, I'm going to take the valves out of here, from here, we've got the sh uh, buckets, shims. Um, I'll space them up with the cams later on. Um, I'm not going, to do, uh, not going to do any mods to the head, I'm not going to shave it. Um, it's pretty flat as it is, so I'll pretty much just risk putting it back on. Not a huge deal there. Um, we'll also be putting some new spark plugs, obviously. Uh, probably going to try some iridiums. Heard good stories about them. A bit expensive, but touches life, really. If you're going to want something decent, you'll spend money on it. Um, yeah, it's not going to be too hard, really. Um, 
I'm going to lap them in. Probably won't see that here. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Okay, all those valves are out. Took about 25 minutes, half hour, somewhere in there. Um, yeah, most of it's not too bad. We'll have to clean out these a little bit. Um, get rid of some of the dust and the dirt. Because that has been sitting there for a couple of months now. No big deal. Um, get yourself a valve pin compressor. If not, make one. Took me about two hours, I reckon. Just out of some scrap metal I had lying around. It's aluminium. Nice and light. Does the job. Enough said about that. Um, yeah, now it's just a matter of cleaning up some of these valves. Don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's a fair bit of carbon on these. Uh, the seals are pretty good, surprisingly, um, as are um, the valve stems. Um, as you're sliding it out, you'll hear a nice little pop. We should do. Put your little finger on there, push it, and you'll hear a nice little... I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a little pop with a good oil seal. Which means the valve stems on this one are pretty good, which obviously means most of the valves are pretty good as well. Um, I'll be checking all those for obvious reasons. Um, the valve stems on this generally pretty good. I've already checked these previously. Uh, it's been in storage, but once again, um, it's just a matter of putting some valves in, lapping them all up, just give it a quick tidy up, and uh, yeah, then we'll have it uh, reassembled and hopefully ready to go and put it back on the bike. Well, as you can see, I've finished it all off now. Um, it's been on and off for you know, a bit over a week, had a couple of complications, nothing, nothing huge. Um, I guess I'll give you an outline of some of the stuff which I've done. Now we've got the tank up, you can see the fuel line's hanging down. Uh, so part of the, um, the fuel pump, fuel pump down here, so for high booster, G6 1300. Um, obviously you've got throttle bodies and whatnot. Um, computer at the rear. Um, this is part of the wideband O2 sensor, which I've also welded the tip of the exhaust, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but yeah, pretty much everything's up. We've got a couple of other sensors on here as well, TPS for the throttle, um, MAP for manifold air pressure for the uh, barrow, and a few other little cool trick bits as well. Okay, under, see there, under here you can uh, see we've got the uh, wideband O2 sensor welded into the exhaust via a bung. Just goes all the way up. Um, bit, of loose, uh, bit of loose wiring at the moment. Um, deliberately kept it loose. It's only in trial um, purely to see how it all goes. Um, yep. Now, huge mess of wires. Um, but once again, we're going to fix this up later on just to see how it all goes. The big silver box down here is the Mega Squirt. That's what's basically running the whole thing, too, for running barrow pressure. And we'll start off with the software, we'll see what happens. fuel pump going on I'll just disable that and we'll close that off and I'll have to go to offline mode what we'll do uh, we'll leave that on, just so I can hear that um, runtime display well this is the basics of it um, there's a whole bunch of digital gauges and whatnot we can get as well you can see if I turn the throttle TPS goes up Throttle position sensor, a whole bunch of other cool things to go with it as well. Manifold air pressure, manifold air pressure here, uh, coolant, air fuel ratio, revs, uh, pulse width for your um, in uh, injectors, and just a huge amount of other sort of settings we can go along as well. So we can even choose little, you know, awesome dashboards as well if you want, so we can load something wanky up. And uh, when the bike started, you basically see all these uh, bounce around, see if we can't get it going again. See, the 
the whole thing's a, uh, up and running now. Um, we've got the, uh, the, the brilliant task of redoing the whole back end of the bike, do all the wiring. This whole soft frame is only ever been temporary. Um, so the whole's going to get remade in aluminium, uh, make it nice and light, uh, change the battery over to something real small and tidy, so that's going to hide. Uh, I've got a lot of nice little trick bits as well to try to tidy it up and whatnot, so it uh, should be pretty good. But, um, but that's the basics of a, um, taking a bike from carburetor, uh, taking control of all the spark, and putting it to EFI. Um, got a lot more things in the works for this. Uh, yeah, but those will, uh, I guess, will come in another day.